I'm laying over in the Sunshine Nation of Singapore to visit the famous Marina Bay, Silver Gardens, Fort Cannings, the Little India, the Chinatown, and some of the off-beaten path attractions. All free, all under 24 hours with as little money as possible. You are welcome to join me here in Layover in Singapore. The best way to get around the island is by the Mass Rapid Transit or MRT. You can get a tourist pass right in the Qingyi Airport entitling you to an unlimited one day, two day or three day ride on the metro, light rail and the buses. Our first stop is Little India by taking the MRT east-west line towards Taramaric direction and get off at Vegas station. Then transfer onto a downtown line and get off at the Little India station. Just a few minutes away is a Little India Arcade. So this is actually the Little India Arcade. It's like a market. And you can get pretty much a lot of stuff here. here. The food, you can get like fabrics and souvenirs. And um, I guess I should start buying my own souvenirs. Let's check it out. It's a market famous for its cheap electronic gadgets. The place I give you exposure to South Indian cultures. So, the rules are saying when you come to a market like this, you need to bargain. And don't go. Don't be afraid to bargain really hard. That's how you get the best deal. Just a 15 minutes walk near the Arab Street is the off-beaten path Haji Lane, filled with street arts, trendy bars, quirky shops, local eateries, and shisha bars. This is one of the few remaining part of Singapore untouched by the extensive modernization over the second half of the 20th century. Much of the world has little idea what Singapore looked like before the skyscraper took over the city state. So this is where you can find lots of street art and murals. Something you don't really expect here in Singapore. In the same area, a few streets away is Massasutta Moth, another Singapore's prominent landmark. It has the capacity to accommodate 5,000 worshippers and has very interesting lease terms. So this is actually one of the beautiful mosques they have here in Singapore. It's interesting because this is an extension of the old mosque on this site, built in 1823. And this is also on a 999 year lease. So it's interesting to see what happens after the lease is over. I'm sure we won't be here. Next, we'll hop onto MRT and get off at the City Hall station to check out the politics of the island nation by paying a visit to the Parliament of Singapore. It's open during the regular business hour to the public, but no admission will be granted to anyone wearing shorts, slippers, sandals, or inappropriate clothing with slogans or symbols. If politics is not your cup of tea, don't worry, there's nature right across nearby. The Fort Canning Park is just a few streets away in the Central Business District and it is more than 60 meters high and you can get a breathtaking view of the city from one end while surrounded by green. In the olden times, the native Malay nickname of Forbidden Hills this is due to a belief that it will be fall up on anyone who enters the hill as it is a place where five kings of ancient Singapore were laid to rest. After walking across the street is the location of the historical Riverside Key within the Singapore River planning area. The key is situated upstream from the mouth of the Singapore River and the Boat Key. Now this is actually the Clark's Key. So if you get tired of indoors, you can come out and have a fresh breath of air. Now if it gets a little bit too hot, don't you worry. Air conditioning is just a few steps away. Inside the mall, that is. This is where you can experience the scenic boat ride, but I'm going to hop onto the Clark Key MRT to our next stop, the Chinatown. And this is where you can pick up some 
inexpensive, tasty Chinese food to fuel up your next destination. For me, I picked up a Chinese bun and I can't wait to try it. After filling up, it's time to visit the financial center of Singapore, the Raphael's Key. The home to the international banks such as RBS, Barclays, and Deutsche Bank, as well as Thomson Reuters and Ernst & Young. But, we'll be heading towards the Clippers Piers, the location of the Merlions. Now behind me is actually one of the very famous landmarks here in Singapore, called the Merlion Lion, with water coming out from his mouth. Well, I wish I can tell you more about it, but tonight, as you can see, we don't have that luck uh, because it's under renovation, I guess. This is the most well-known marketing icon of Singapore, depicting a mythical creature with a lion's head and a body of a fish. Now, what you're seeing behind me is the, one of the most luxurious hotels here in, in Asia and with a really nice rooftop pool. But given the fact that we're on budget, and we also have a limited amount of time, we're not going to be able to enjoy that this time around. But let's go for a nice walk along the bridge on the Esplanade Drive to visit the Theatre by the Bay. The underground walkway also contains various art exhibits. Only 10 minutes walk away is another important landmark, the Singapore Flyers, the most famous giant Ferris wheel in the world. Open in 2008, construction have taken two and a half years and consists of a 28 air-conditioned capsules. From its terminal building, you're able to see right across the bay and get a glimpse of the tree of life. Next, we'll walk across the Bayfront Avenue to the Marina Bay Sand for the free spectacular wonderful full light show. The spectacular show you just saw happens every single night here and there's no reason for you to miss it after all, it is free. Singapore can be hot and humid but don't worry. Now I'm the kind of person who just can't stand the heat for too too long so every half an hour or so I always go into somewhere where there's air conditioning to just cool off and then head back out. This is exactly what happened after the light show. I come in here at the Marina Bay, there's a shopping center here, and I'm about to leave right now and enjoy the rest of the night. So if you can't stand the heat, cool out before you get burnt out. Great advice, by the way. But I'm an outdoor person. So right behind the mall is the Silver Garden, home to the Singapore's famous Tree of Life. So this is another place where you have no excuse not to check out. It's actually free. It's called Silver Garden and uh, it's right behind Marina Bay. It's roughly about three to four minutes walking distance. And yes, by the way, that is the luxury hotel which I mentioned before. If you can't be inside there, at least you can look at it from here. And you also get to look at the beautiful sky tree. I think that's what it's called. After getting a little experience of Singapore, it's time to return back to Qingyi Airport the same way. After all, the fare is included in the tourist pass. I recommend you get two day pass even if you're staying under 24 hours as each day expires at midnight. If you happen to arrive early at the airport and got some time to kill, don't worry. Qingyi Airport has been voted the best airport in the world since 2013. You then enjoy free high-speed internet, indoor gardens and shops. The best of all, if you aren't lucky enough to have 24 hours here, the airport offers free Singapore heritage tour if you have at least 5.5 hours or at least 6 hours for a city site tour to spare between your connecting flight. With that being said, I wish you have a magnificent time in Singapore and have a pleasant flight.